Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my computer and my laptop and my phone all say 430. So we're going to get started. Uh, my name is Eric Reynolds. I'm the Director of Risk Management here at Ventura Unified. Uh, also with us today is Jody Argetta. She's the Benefit Specialist here with Risk Management. So she's your go-to gal for all benefit questions. And Trevor Hansen and Amanda Redditch uh, from SIBO are both with us today. Thank you guys for being here. Much appreciated. So uh, we have scheduled to take about an hour today. Um, might be a little less, might be a little bit more. I'd want to let everybody know uh, who is on the call today that we are recording this session. And the reason we're doing that is because uh, Trevor is going to have a presentation on HSAs. And so we're going to post that to our website afterwards um, so people can come back and view that if they didn't have a chance to attend today. Um, uh, thank you, um, Aiden, from, um, uh, for posting on the chat. I was just going to get to that. If you have any questions for anybody who's online, please just uh, type them in the chat. Uh, anything general can be answered by Jody, Trevor, and Amanda. Um, Trevor will be presenting after I say a few things. And then um, if you have, um, let's say not a general question, a private or a specific question, Jody is going to put her um, email and her phone number in the chat. And you're welcome to contact her um, later or at another time. Um, and she can help you with anything that is not addressed during the um, presentation today. So give me one second. I'm going to put up the open enrollment packet that you should have just received. Okay, um, does everybody see that? Jody, is the pres is it up on the yes, screen? Yes, it's up. You're good. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, everybody. So, um, what is open enrollment? So, open enrollment happens annually, and this year it's in the month of October. And open enrollment is a time where anybody who is eligible. Well, let's start with enrolled people. Anybody who is enrolled in benefits currently can add or drop dependents or change their coverages. Additionally, during open enrollment, people who are eligible but not currently enrolled, so people who work 50% or more at Ventura Unified, can sign up for benefits. All the changes made during October will be effective January 1. If you don't make your changes during October, the only other time during the year where you can make changes to your health and welfare benefits are if you have what's called a change in life event or change in life circumstances. And that's if something like if you get married or have a child, those type of things. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to go over um, our open enrollment packet. So today you might have received an email from Jody with a reminder about today's workshop. And then what you should have received over the past couple of weeks is you received a one page mail to your home address, uh, basically letting you know about open enrollments. And then you should have received an email also, and that email had uh, QR codes and links to it. And one of the links is to this open enrollment packet that we're gonna go over now. So what you're looking at now, this QR code, that will link you to a electronic program called Benetract. And with now that we're with SIBO, all of our changes are done electronically through this system called Benetrack. So you can go to the link or you can go to that QR code and make any changes that you want during the month of October, okay? So we're gonna just scroll through the packet and we'll talk about each page. I'm not gonna go in each page in detail because there are quite a few pages, but um, I will tell you about what's in the open enrollment packet. Okay, so uh, this, the first page basically tells you all about open enrollment, talks about when you can make changes. Um, the second page was about our open enrollment fairs, which is today is virtual, and we had one last week at Buena. Page three, I do want to draw your attention to, um, we have a program called um, My Plan Choices, and My Plan Choices is a free online tool that you can go in uh, here is the link down here at the bottom. And basically what you do is you, um, 
uh, you put in all your personal information, how many dependents you have, that type of thing, what type of, uh, you know, how much do you spend on prescriptions, how often do you go to the doctor, those type of things. And then this tool will make a recommendation for you as to what the what their recommendation for the best choice for you and your family is for your um, a selection of the health insurance. Now, remember, at Ventura Unified now, currently and going forward, effective uh, January 1, there's four health insurance uh, uh, plans to choose from. We have our traditional PPO plan, our traditional Kaiser plan, and we also have what are uh, two plans that are called uh, consumer health uh, plans, consumer-driven health care plans, which basically are higher deductible plans, but also they um, attach to them as a health savings account. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So this, My Plan Choices, is a great tool. If you're thinking about possibly changing or if you have any questions on possibly what might be the good plan for you and your family. Uh, again, this is Benetrack, uh, the QR, this is the link and the QR code where you go on, uh, you log in and you make any changes that you want to make. Or if you're not currently enrolled, but you're eligible, you enroll for benefits and add all of your dependent information. And this this page is if you have pro, uh, problems logging on to Benetrack, this uh, tells you how to do an alternate log on. And if you still have problems you can contact Jody and she can walk you through that. Okay, the next eight pages, and I'm sorry there are so many, but since we do have um, selections, we do have a lot of different uh, price uh, sheets now. So the next eight pages all apply to, um, we basically now at Ventura Unified, we have multiple plan options. Uh, and we have uh, two um, uh, tiers for uh, employees uh, as to what the district will contribute to them. We have employees who um, are hired before February 24 and, and employees hired after February 24. And based on your hire date, that determines how much the district uh, contributes for you and your family for your health and welfare benefits. So this page and the next seven pages, so eight page totals, uh, tell you if you're less than full time uh, and or if you're hired February 24 or after what your cost share would be for each plan. Uh, so what you wanna do, if you wanna know how much it would be is you look for three things. So on the top left, it says if uh, 11 month here, so some, Sheets are for 11 months, some are for 12 months. Over here, it says this sheet is for be hired before 24, February 24. And down here, right above the blue column, it shows this is for classified. So I'm gonna um, just keep moving now, but this sheet as well as the next seven are all pricing on what the uh, plan would cost you, your employee contribution, Again, if you're less than full time and or hired after February 2024. Okay, let me get through these eight. Okay, moving right along. Um, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the CDHP plans. We have again, two plans, one Kaiser, one PPO that are uh, CDHP plans. They come with a higher deductible, but they also come with a health savings account option. If, um, again, the district um, will make a contribution um, for, to your health savings account, that contribution will vary based on your hire date. So this sheet here, tells you what the district will pay for you um, for your health savings account um, uh, if you decide to go with a CDHP uh, plan and 
if you are less than full time, um, that uh, also will affect what the district will contribute for you. And again, that is just the district's contribution, not the employee contribution. You can choose, if you choose those plans as an employee, you can also choose to contribute yourself. Okay, the next two pages are um, pretty important pages, uh, in my opinion. If you are um, trying to decide, um, again, if you are currently not enrolled and, and trying to decide what plan you uh, want to pick, or if you're perhaps thinking about changing plans, this is what's called a plan comparison. If you look down the left column, this talks about common questions within coverage plans. In other words, what's your out-of-pocket, your deductible, um, is it compatible with an HSA account, um, do you get your pick your own doctor? And then if you go across the top here, it talks about our um, the coverages if you choose the PPO, if if and that with the PPO, both um, the non HSA and the HSA, it gives in network and out of network pricing. And then the two columns, the far two right columns, are the traditional Kaiser and the CDHP Kaiser plan. So um, I really strongly encourage you to take a look at these pages. Um, if you uh, to compare everything that's important to you for the coverages within each plan. If for some reason you didn't get Jody's email today with the open enrollment packet, which this, this is a part of, this is included, everything I'm going over now is in the packet, um, you can email her and she'll email it uh, to you. But again, it's it was sent out in an email to you and it was sent out as a reminder again today, okay? So that's the plan comparison. And again, I wanna refer you back to the My Plan Choices that we talked about earlier. That can also kind of do the analysis for you to compare the plans as well. Okay. This um, talks about, this is Delta Dental. So our uh, dental insurance is still with Delta Dental. Um, Basically, dental, Delta Dental is the same as it has been, but this talks about um, all of the uh, all the coverages for Delta Dental. That's um, those those two pages. Uh, the next page, our Vision Insurance, is still with VSP. There are a couple of um, enhancements that do not. Um, uh, cost uh, you or the district anything um, uh, additional. So thank you, SIBO, for that. Um, again, we have our base plan, and then we have our enhanced buyout plan. The enhanced buyout plan with Ventura Unified, the employee pays um, the additional cost on that. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is... Um, um, when we went to SIBO a year and a half ago, we are now allowed to do um, a cash in lieu program. What cash in lieu means is that if you are eligible, full-time and eligible, or enrolled in benefits at VUSD, and you have coverage or can get coverage elsewhere, not through Medi-Cal, not through Covered California. So it's generally would be like through a spouse's um, employer. That's the most common circumstance. Or if you have two people that are potentially covered through VSD, you are eligible to get a um, cash payment annually instead of taking the benefits. Your payment uh, depends on if you are a full-time or part-time member, but you're eligible to get up to um, $5,000. And okay, so this page 
And the next, and these two pages are the most common cash in lieu questions. So if that's something that you think you might be eligible for, interested in, qualified for, highly encourage you to read those two pages. Um, those are some most common questions that we put together. Then the next page is cash in lieu health uh, benefits. This tells you what you have to do and what you have to provide to be eligible for cash in lieu. And then the next page, this cash in lieu um, and welfare benefits form, enrollment form, this is what you have to fill out uh, and recertify every year with Jody and provide documentation of your other coverage for you to be eligible for cash in lieu. Yeah, and again, for those people who are joining late, if you do have questions, please post in the chat. Uh, Jody, Amanda, and Trevor will answer those. Um, if you have um, private uh, questions more of a private or personal nature, um, I would encourage you to email or call Jody um, those, uh, and she can answer you uh, those questions at another time. Okay, um, the next 11 pages, I know it sounds like a lot, <laughs> Uh, these are all from SIBO, um, and I do encourage you to read them, but we're not going to go over them today. These are basically um, mandated disclosures uh, that have to be sent out to all, our, all of our employees, uh, eligible employees annually, so we send them out during open enrollment, okay? So that's the next 11 pages of your open enrollment packet. And I think that is it. Yep, that's it for me. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to invite uh, Trevor Hansen from SIBO to um, talk about health savings accounts. And um, yeah, like I said, if you do have questions, just feel free to post them in the chat. All right. Thank you, Eric. Let me share my screen here. Yeah. I think you should be able to. Perfect. I drag it. Drag. All right, perfect. And you guys can hear and see me and the presentation. All right, awesome. All right, so my name is Trevor Hansen. I'm with California Schools Employee Benefits Organization and I'm the health benefits manager. Um, we just go by SIBO for short. Um, so this is gonna be a presentation on consumer directed health plans or what we call CDHPs. So we're gonna start with just defining some terms. We're gonna go at kind of the highest basic level. What's the difference between an HMO and a PPO? So an HMO is what's known as a health maintenance organization or HMO for short. So what they, these, um, it's a network of physicians that require you to choose a primary care physician or a medical group, which refer you to a specialist when necessary. There's limited access to care outside of the network. In our SIBO world, we utilize Anthem Blue Cross and Kaiser Permanente for our HMOs. Um, and in Ventura Unified world, it's just Kaiser Permanente. Um, and in, with areas except for emergency care, which is always covered. Um, so even if you're traveling outside of your Kaiser network, you still will have access to emergency care. And then there's also what's known as a preferred provider organization or a PPO. So this gives you a choice of physicians within the network, and you do not need a referral to go see a specialist. So you can kind of self-refer yourself. Um, we always recommend utilizing the network first. There is limited benefits outside of the network, but you do receive most benefits if you do utilize the network. Um, and then it does give you a little bit more flexibility when traveling away from home, just because you're not, you you are able to see um, physicians that are outside of your service area, you know, because the network is broad and does go across the United States, which in this world would be any of our Anthem Blue Cross PPOs. So then we also want to just define some other health terms. So you have what's known as a deductible, which is the amount that you pay for covered health care services before the insurance plan starts to pay. The deductible doesn't apply for some services um, and preventive care is always covered at 100%. We do list this on our summary plan descriptions that Eric was just going over before. So you'll see if there's deductible waive, that means this service can be rendered prior to the deductible being met. Deductibles do run January 1st to December 31st of each year. Once you meet that deductible, 
Then you go on what's known as the co-insurance phase, which is the percentage of the negotiated build amount that you pay for services. So on your indemnity for PPO, it has 15% co-insurance or on either of the CDHP plans through BUSD, it's 10%. So basically, if you're in the deductible phase of services $100, you're paying that $100 in full. If you're in the co-insurance paid phase, you're just paying that percentage. So it's either 10% or 15%. So either $10, $15. Then you go after the co-insurance phase, you're going up to what's known as the out-of-pocket maximum, which is the maximum that you'll pay for medical and prescription drug expenses in a plan year. So these also run January 1st to December 31st of each year. So once you hit your deductible phase, then you start paying your co-insurance phase. And if you happen to meet your out-of-pocket, this is the most that you'll pay in a calendar year. So if you're continuing to utilize in-network providers you and you hit your out-of-pocket maximum, you are no longer paying for your care because you met that out-of-pocket maximum. All right, so then we do have, this is the summary plan descriptions that Eric showed earlier. Um, I just wanted to point out kind of where, where these where these terms land. So at the top rows, your out-of-pocket limit. So it is listed by plan. So you have your indemnity for PPO and your Anthem CDHP 90, the Kaiser HMO, and then the Kaiser CDHP DHMO 90. You have the deductible. So again, this applies unless otherwise stated. <clears throat> so it's listed as an individual, an individual within a family or a family. And then you have the co-insurance here, which is just saying, if the plan's paying 85%, you pick up the remainder. So 15% on the indemnity for PPO, and then again, 10% on both of the CDHP plans. And then this is also where we show if a plan is HSA qualified. So as an example, this indemnity for PPO is not HSA qualified, neither is this HMO 30 on the Kaiser plan. However, these CDHP plans are, and I'll go into why that is the case. Um, so what is a CDHP? <clears throat> this is a consumer directed health plan which is a high deductible health plan paired with a spending account for out-of-pocket expenses, which is most commonly known as a health savings account or an HSA. So what is an HSA? A health savings account lets you put aside pre-tax money to pay for qualified medical, dental, or vision expenses as defined by the IRS. We do have um, a summary listing of qualified expenses. It's pretty much anything that's prescribed to you and including so medical, dental, vision, and including over-the-counter drugs. And the idea with an HSA is by using the untaxed dollars to pay for your deductibles, your co-pays, or your co-insurance, and other qualified expenses, you can lower your overall health care cost. Um, so what is a high deductible health plan or an HDHP? These are defined annually by the IRS, and what they do is they set a minimum deductible and a maximum out-of-pocket. So what is that for 2025? The IRS splits the coverage into individual coverage, which is just one singular person covered under the plan, or family coverage, which is two or more covered. So for an individual, uh, in order to be known as a high deductible health plan, you have to have a deductible greater than or equal to 1,650. Or for a family of two or more, a deductible greater than or equal to 3,300. And these do have to be combined medical and prescription drug deductibles which are a little bit different from the, your traditional plans. So if we go back to the summary plans, plan descriptions here, if you look at that deductible on this indemnity for PPO, you notice that it's 800 per person or 2,400 for a family versus these CDHP plans, which are 1,650 individual, 3,300 for a family. The reason why these this indemnity for PPO is not HSA qualified is because it doesn't have a deductible that's at least 1,650. So if you notice the two that are offered at Venture Unified, these are actually the richest or lowest deductibles that we can go for 2025. And I do wanna point out that these do change annually, um, not usually a lot. Individuals, it's usually about $50. Family, it's about $100 a year. That So they do have to increase annually, but we, Right at VUSD, you are offering the richest plans for 2025. So what is a CDHP? It's a health plan. So it's a high deductible health plan that is considered HSA qualified through SIBO. So it's either the Anthem CDHP PPO 90 or that Kaiser CDHP DHMO 90 paired with a health savings account, which is a physical bank account that lets you put aside pre-tax dollars to pay for your medical, dental, and vision expenses. The idea is that you reimburse for your care through this account and it does work in conjunction with a health plan. 
So if we're looking at it visually, um, this is the part that I cannot stress enough is that the, you do have to meet that annual deductible prior to the health plan kicking in at all. The only, the only um, exception to that rule is that preventive care is always covered at 100%. So they do have a lot higher deductibles than what you're used to, especially compared to that indemnity for PPO having an 800 per individual deductible. Um, however, once you do meet that deductible, um, and again, medical and prescription drug combined, so it, it is a little different too. But once you do meet that deductible, you go into, again, the coinsurance phase, and you still have your out-of-pocket, which is the most you pay in a calendar year to protect you. Um, you still have the same network. So if you're utilizing the Anthem PPO network right now and want to move over to the Anthem CDHP 90, it's the exact same Anthem PPO network. Same with Kaiser. If you're seeing a Kaiser doctor, it's the exact same network, same prescription drug coverage. All what's different is just the, how the cost sharing is applying to you. You still have the same resources and tools available to you, which includes um, video visits, chatting with your doctor, all of that's still available, health coaches, everything there. Now what gets paired with this account is the HSA. And again, this is an option to reimburse from the account and you're receiving tax-free interest earnings while your money remains into the HSA. There's also no limit to the dollar amount that you can have in your HSA. It's just what can go into it annually, which I'll get into in uh, the next section too. So why would somebody choose a CDHP? The premiums are typically lower than traditional health plans. Um, this is especially true for those of you that are not full-time staff. You will notice that the premiums are significantly lower compared to what your traditional plans are. The HSA deposits are tax-free from a federal level. You do pay state taxes in California. Um, and then there's contribution maximums that are set annually by the IRS. So this just caps you. So this is the most that can go into your account. Um, I'll get into that next too. And employees and employers can contribute into the account. And then withdrawals for qualified medical, dental, or vision expenses are tax-free for the life of the account. The IRS defines these um, in 2020, over-the-counter drugs were added. So that's not to say that something couldn't be added in the future. That's just one of the most more recent developments with HSAs. Um, and again, you can save for the future because the funds roll over year over year. The accounts grow over time as you're earning tax-free interest. Again, there's no cap to the amount that you can put into the account. And that money is yours. So even if you were to change jobs or change plans, that is still your money to keep. So let's say this year you choose one of the high deductible health plans, you decide it's not for your family, um, and then switch back to a traditional plan, that money is still yours. The only stipulation is that since you're not enrolled in a high deductible health plan, you cannot put more money of your own into the account. So as long as you're enrolled in a high deductible health plan, you can still contribute more money into it. Um, and again, tax-free interest, once you do hit $2,000 in either Anthem or we use health, health equity on the Anthem side or Kaiser, it's their built-in healthcare bank, um, you can actually start investing it. So there are some investment options once you reach these $2,000 minimums. Um, and then in addition to the medical, dental, or vision expenses, you can also pay for COBRA continuation coverage. So this is if you were to change jobs you know, lose coverage for whatever reason, you can pay the premiums out of the HSA. You don't have to, it's just an option. Um, and also long-term care insurance. This is one of the only ways that you can pay this pre-tax. And this is at any age. Once you hit 65, however, you can pay your Medicare Part A premiums if you have it. Most people don't, but if you do, you can pay it as well as your Part B premiums, which are roughly 170 a month right now. You cannot pay for Medicare Advantage or Medigap, which are known as supplement plans. However, it's just an option, additional option for you to pay pre, um, with still being pre-tax. And then in, additionally, funds for non-qualified expenses, once you're over 65, you can utilize, and it's just taxes, ordinary income without a penalty. If you're under 65 and pay for an expense out of the HSA that's non-qualified, it's a 20% penalty and it's taxes income. So once you hit 65, it's just giving you a little more freedom to pay for non-qualified expenses should you need to draw from the account. All right, so now we're going, in, going into the annual maximums and the employer contributions into the HSA. So for 2025, the IRS splits again into individual, which is one person covered, or family, which is two or more covered. 
as an individual under the age of 55, you can contribute up to $4,300. That's employee plus employer contributions. So that's just collectively, this is the most that can go into the account in the 2025 calendar year. For a family of two or more, you can contribute up to $8,550. And then if you're over the age of 55, that's what the, the there was a question in the chat with a $1,000 catch up. So this is where this applies. It just allows you to contribute an extra $1,000 if you're over 55 in any of the calendar year. So if you turn 55 in 2025, at any time you're eligible for the full $1,000 catch up. All right, so for employees, hired prior to February 14th of 2024 at VUSD. This is for classified staff. Um, you will receive a one-time district contribution of $150 into the HSA, as well as these monthly district contributions, which are prorated over 10 contributions through the year, September through June, um, based on your hours worked. So uh, if you're working 28 to 40 hours a week, it's a total of $3,320 into the HSA, plus that 150, um, you can contribute additional funds of your own, just bearing in mind these maximums that were listed previously, because these are stipulated by the IRS and do change annually. For those of certificated staff, it's that one-time $150 contribution into the HSA. And then it, this is by contract percentage, it varies from there. Um, again, these are prorated 10 contributions through the year, September through June. And then again, you do have the ability to contribute more into this, bearing in mind just those annual maximums. And this is again, certificate of staff hired before February 14th of 2024. Now, for those of that are hired after February 14th of 2024, you will receive a one-time district contribution of $150 into the HSA. And again, you can contribute funds of your own, which are going in pre-tax into the HSA, again, bearing in mind the annual maximum set by the IRS. All right, so in order to transition into a CDHP, the IRS requires what's, what they define as just being eligible, which all that means is that you can make or take contributions into your health savings account. Um, there's three general requirements for this. One is you cannot be claimed as a dependent on somebody else's tax return. You must be enrolled in an HSA qualified health plan, which are again, the high deductible health plans we defined earlier. In the VUSD world, it's the Anthem CDHP PPO90 or the Kaiser CDHP DHMO90. And then unfortunately, this does include other coverage. So other coverage being Medicare, Medicaid, additional healthcare coverage that is not an HSA qualified deductible plan. And this does include being enrolled in a spouse's non-HSA qualified plan of secondary coverage. So we do kind of have in the education world, I would say is more more folks being dual enrolled. Um, so as an example, since that indemnity for PPO is a non high deductible health plan, so it's non HSA qualified because the deductible has to be at least 1,650 individual or 3,300 as a family of two or more. This, if you were to cover yourself on an HSA and then and your spouses, you would you would not be technically considered eligible to make or take contributions into your HSA. You can have dual enrollment in two HSA qualified plans. That's fine. It's just making sure that you're not covered on a non-HSA qualified plan. And then this also includes full purpose flexible spending accounts, which are again reimbursed for, um, for medical, dental, and vision. So you can, if you switch to a limited purpose flexible spending account, you are able to contribute into the HSA. Now there is permitted coverage. So this includes accident insurance, dental insurance, which is offered here at VUSD through Delta Dental, your vision insurance, your specified disease coverage, your hospital indemnity insurance, long-term care insurance, and then your short and long-term disabilities. Those are all permitted. It's really just these three stipulations that you wanna keep in mind. And unfortunately, these aren't our rules, it's the IRS rules. So if you, if, you do end up not being a qualified individual, it's actually a penalty on your personal income taxes. So we just like to keep that in mind when you're when you're considering these plans that you they are very situational. So we don't know, you know, what if you have coverage that's outside of the SIBO umbrella, if it's non, if it's HSA qualified or not. So you just keep that in mind for those of you that are in these situations. 
Um, regarding keeping track of the HSA expenses, the account holder is responsible for keeping track of HSA expenses. So it's not your employer's responsibility. It's not the administrator's responsibility, as in the administrator being the physical bank account where you have your HSA funds. Um, unlike an flexible spending account, substantiation of claims is not required. So you do not need to prove that an expense is HSA eligible or not. And no receipts are due to the IRS unless you're being audited. Um, so that is your responsibility. And again, even if you were to have a non-HSA qualified expense come out of your HSA, it is a, an attestation to the IRS and you, there are penalties involved by taking the funds. It's a 20% if you're under 65 plus personal income tax. Um, and then this, again, just a reminder of the deductible and out-of-pockets being reset. They do reset every January 1st. So effective if you do switch to one of these plans, effective January 1st, that deductible for you or your whole family will be all on you effective January 1st onwards. It's good all the way through December 31st and then resets every year thereafter. Um, so we do have some claim examples. We're going to look at these before deductible and then after deductible. So our first plan here, we're going to look at the Anthem plans. So we have your indemnity for PPO on the left and then your CDHP PPO 90 on the right. So we're gonna look at a specialist office visit, which for those of you that are currently enrolled in the indemnity for PPO with your 800 per person deductible, this should be somewhat familiar. So you know that you have to pay that full negotiated price. So if it's $155 in your pre-deductible phase, you do have to pay that in full and as well as a CT. So just an imaging example. So in both of these plans, you're still paying that full price for all the services rendered. The difference being on the CDHP 90, you do have the ability to pay that out of your HSA using pre-tax dollars. So after the deductible is met, this is when we start going into the co-insurance phase. So we're taking that same $155 office visit on both plans. The indemnity for PPO has 15% member co-insurance. So that, that service is now $23. And then on um, ten percent member co-insurance on the high on the CDHP PPO ninety or fifteen dollars and fifty cents, and again the same as the CT. So you can see after that deductible phase, it enters the co-insurance phase, and they're very similar. It's just paying how the plan pays out. Um, just again bearing in mind that this high deductible health plan does have the higher medical and prescription drug deductibles. Um, we do have the Kaiser example. Um, so this is before deductible. For those on this traditional HMO, it is a little bit different because these plans do not have a deductible, even though they're billing out the same way. Um, right now, we're taking a specialist office visit again and an imaging example. All you're doing on this on your traditional HMO is paying that $30 office visit copay. The plan's picking up the rest. So on this Kaiser CDHP DHMO 90, they work in a similar fashion to the Anthem PPOs. So again, it's going to be line itemed um, for all services rendered, and you will be responsible for that cost when you're in the pre-deductible phase. So if we take that same high deductible health plan, but utilize, now you're in the co-insurance phase on the high deductible health plan. But again, there is no deductible on this traditional HMO. So you still just have that $30 office visit. For the DHMOs, you are paying that 10% member co-insurance. So again, they're similar after deductible. It's just more of a shock for those of you that are currently enrolled in Kaiser to have to be billed more than just what your traditional co-pays are. Um, there are some resources here. So IRS publication 969 does go over in full the eligibility requirements in order to enroll into an HSA. Um, and then IRS publication 502 goes over medical and dental expenses. We will drop a PDF in the chat or the, um, it's like a simplified version, but you do need to read them in full to understand what you can utilize out of it, but it's generally anything prescribed to you. Um, Health Equity is our vendor for Anthem enrollments. So if you enroll in any of the HSAs, we automatically open the physical bank account for you. So, and pay for the account fees is built into the premium. So Kaiser Permanente, the HSA, is through Kaiser, so it's just built right into your login. And then we do have a uniform glossary if you had any questions on some terms. Um, Eric did go over my plan choices at the beginning. So it is a tool that helps you 
narrow down your choices just because now you do have four plans versus the two that you had previously. Um, what it will do is ask your utilization. So it's going to ask you how many office visits, ER visits, urgent care visits, um, what kind of medication you're on, take into account your employee premiums, any employer contributions into the account, and then give you a kind of a rough estimate as to what you can expect to pay in a calendar year with your top three plan choices. Um, gives you a ranking. It's, I'd say if you're, if you're questioning what plan or what route to go, I would maybe start here, just as like a good starting point, and then you can ask any of your questions too. Just it's just trying to give you an estimate for the year. Um, and then this is a link to my plan choices QR code and hard coded link. Um, and then Eric did go over this as well that open enrollment changes are made through Benetrack. So there's a QR code at the right or eenroller.net. Um, the default password is generally the VUSD, lowercase initially your first name and then last part of your SSN. And then all open enrollment changes need to be completed by October 31st of 2024. And then if you do have any trouble logging in, there is an alternate login, forget username or password at the right. Um, that does ask you your first name, last name, social security number, date of birth. And then this will give you access and then let you reset your password as well. So with that, we've come to the end of the formal presentation. Um, I did see the chat going off, so I'm not sure I can stop sharing. We can kind of answer some questions here too. Okay, uh, thank you, Trevor, uh, for the presentation, much appreciated. So for everybody um, on the call, thank you for joining us today. Uh, just for your information, so SIBO is a basically an insurance pool that Ventura Unified is now a member of, and that's who we get our insurance benefits through. So I want to thank Trevor and Amanda for being on the call today and, and their teamwork and collaboration both today and throughout the year. They help us get the open enrollment packages together and when you guys enroll with us, we get them their information, and they're the kind of the intermediary between um, the districts and Kaiser and, and um, Anthem and those type of organizations. I want to just go over a couple of main points. Um, I see there's one question uh, still remaining unanswered in the chat. I'm sure Jody's probably, Jody or Amanda or Trevor might probably knock that one out, but I did want to let you know. So. I noticed in the chat almost all the questions today were on uh, CDHPs and HSAs. So um, thank you for joining us and and uh, posing those questions. Hopefully um, you got the information you needed. Just wanted to double down on a couple of the points Trevor made on the HSA plans. Um, they are a good option for some people, depending on the situation you're in. You need to realize they do have higher deductibles than... Um, your traditional Anthem plan and your traditional Kaiser plan. And those deductibles must be met in full before the plan pays anything. For people in who are used to the traditional Kaiser HMO, um, the CDHP Kaiser plan would be a change because you're not just going to have your $30 um, copay now. You're going to be, it's going to be from the deductible perspective, it's going to be more like the traditional PPO plan, you're going to have a larger deductible that you're going to have to meet on the front end. Um, some people have asked us, um, not necessarily today, but during open enrollment, why um, are there different employee monthly contributions for people hired before and after February 14th, 2024? And that basically has arose out of the last two years with negotiations between the unions and the district. Um, and basically um, the negotiations determine what the district contributes to employees. So that's the reason um, there are differences in the uh, employer contributions on those um, uh, two issues, uh, HSA employer contribution and employee employer contribution for their monthly premium. Um, again, if you're considering a consumer-driven healthcare plan with an attached health savings account, I really encourage you, like Trevor, Trevor was saying, go to My Plan Choices, maybe plug in all your information first, see what uh, that plan recommends for you, and then also go to that two-page plan comparison document 
take a glance at that and that will tell you um, all the differences. This presentation is being recorded and um, we will get uh, try to get that posted for you as quickly as we can on our risk management internet site. Um, the way you get to that, Jody put the link in the chat, but the way you get to that is just go to Ventura Unified. Let me do it real quick. Go to Ventura Unified School District website. Go to Staff and Careers on the top right. Drop down Staff Resources. Um, and then you go to Employee Health and Welfare Benefits. Click on that and you'll see everything you could need possibly and more. Um, Jody graciously uh, volunteered. We hadn't talked about this before, but thank you, Jody. She's going to make a short list of the most um, frequently asked questions on this webinar, and she'll also post, post that to the website. Want to make sure one more time I say that um, um, you have until October 31st to go online to Benetrack, make any changes, or enroll yourself and or your dependents and your dependents um, if you're not currently enrolled, but you're eligible to enroll. Again, working 50% or more at Ventura Unified, you have to do that by uh, the 31st. And um, again, if you don't do it by the 31st, you'll have to wait till um, open enrollment next year. And again, all the changes that you make will be um, effective January 1, 2025. I see there's been a few more questions posed to the chat. So let's look at those real quickly. We'll give Jody and Amanda and perhaps Trevor a chance to answer those. And if you have any more, go ahead and, and um, throw them into the chat now. We do have a couple minutes left on our originally scheduled time. Yeah, do you see the question? I mean, it was answered about the HSA and FSA. So the it's IRS regulation, so they do consider it double dipping if you're enrolled in a full purpose flexible spending account. Um, so in order to make or take contributions into your health savings account, you would have to disenroll and then have your funds expire prior to being able to make or take contributions into your HSA. Um, they are similar in a fashion that they reimbursed to the same, you know, medical, dental, and vision expenses. Just the difference is HSA is an actual bank account, debit account. So unlike an FSA, you don't get your money up front for whatever you put for the year. That is just something to bear in mind. You can reimburse yourself out of an HSA once the funds are in the account. Um, but that's kind of the main differences between them. And then aside from the fact that they do roll over year over year and it's your money to keep. So that's just kind of high level differences between them. Eric, you're muted. Thank you. Uh, Jody and Amanda, anything that um, Trevor and I uh, neglected to mention um, or something that you've noticed was answered and asked quite a few times on the chat that you might want to add? I think if anyone is running into problems um, accessing Benetrack um, after they try to um, reset their password, feel free to email me or give me a ring and I will um, send you your username, your password, partial password, and um, the link to Benetrack to help you out. Um, feel free to give me a call here at the district office at 805-641-5000 extension 1242 or email me at jody.argetha at venturausd.org. I put my email and contact um, phone number in the chat box, so please make note of that. Um, please remember, if you do not have any changes and do not want to change anything, you do not need to do anything. Your plan will roll over um, as is for 2025 plan year, and you will have a chance this time next year in October of 2025 to make changes for 2026. Thank you, Jody. Amanda, anything that we forgot? She says no. She doesn't have a microphone, sorry. Okay. 
Okay, one more question in the chat here, I see. We have some pro some questions about HSAs. Um, for employees who are hired uh, before February 20, um, February 14th, 2024, and are full-time, the district will contribute $332 per month um, into their HSA for 10 months up to $3,320. Uh, that amount is set. It is a negotiated item, um, and, but the money in your HSA rolls over. It does not expire. So if you don't spend it, it um, sits there and uh, can potentially grow in value. Um, so you don't have the pressure you have to spend an HSA the way you do with an FSA. Yeah, remember, keep in mind the employer contribution to an HSA account is set through the negotiation process. The employee optional contribution is something that can vary up to the yearly maximums that Trevor covered. Okay. Um, Again, thanks everyone for joining. Um, we will post this uh, recording to our website. I can't guarantee tomorrow, but we'll try our best. Uh, Trevor and Amanda, thanks for being here and everybody have a great evening. Thank you.